2022 channel update. May the 4th be with you. Okay, shitty joke aside, let's get into the nitty gritty of things. First of all, I hope you enjoy the COD Modern Warfare 3 Spec Ops gameplay. I am completely terrible at this game. I don't even like COD, but I'll explain why a little later. Assuming you stick around, that is. But okay, enough enough topic. Let's get into the real nitty gritty. The first thing I want to talk about is why I didn't really do a April update, and it's because there's been a lot of shit that has gone on in that month that I didn't really have the time to really do anything. Particularly with Easter, Easter week at least, being extremely busy, and even on the last day of the week, there was a really sudden event that went on, and it really brought everyone down in a sudden way. Even before then, however, there was some friends of mine who I used to get together with before the end of the world came around, and the end of the world in all the parts of the world, and I'm not going to really disclose because that's not the point. We have finally been able to hook up on Xbox One, which I've been playing a lot of COD recently, including Call of Duty Black Ops and Modern Warfare 3, since that is one of the other person's favorite type of game. That in their selection of games besides COD is Minecraft, and I'm not going to really get much else into it, but at least not right now, because it is kind of going to affect some other things that I'm going to disclose that I feel that should be relevant, but without going into personal business, because this is something I don't want to really talk about outside of what I feel should be necessary to share versus what I should keep to myself. But I will say that my stream schedule will most likely be changing. I'm not entirely sure what, but I will probably have figured it out by the time that this video will go up. There is a lot of footage on here, though it will just mainly be depending on how far I get. Maybe I'll pick one of the levels. I've only recorded about four of the Spec Ops missions. And I'm actually trying to go for the achievement where you get to wave 15 on them. And even doing the insane one, the one that I ended up picking because me and my one of my friends tried to do some survival-based stuff. But we'll talk about that a little later. But that is definitely one thing I do want to talk about is that the stream schedule will most certainly be changing to accommodate the fact that I just don't feel like streaming at least in the long term, is going to be of my most focus right now because I've been dealing with a lot of other shit. Even with the two loyal members I have, I feel that I haven't really had any interaction with them as of late because they've been extremely busy with other shit. And even in the rare instance I do get other people, it isn't really that exciting. Part of it is because I'm kind of lazy, but it's... uh. I don't want to sound like an asshole or anything, but it's just, if I feel like I can get more entertainment out of people that I've known and can even try to make some time to play something off stream versus streaming online to people who might catch my streams, then I'm just going to take the personal route and not stress over trying to pump out something because I'm busy with shit in real life and the few people I still have contact with either don't talk to me for reasons that I'm not really sure why, probably because I go on a lot about tangents, and if you've seen some of my rants, they kind of allude to that, but whatever. I will be taking a little bit of a break as far as streaming goes around the mid-week of May. I'll probably post the exact time frame in which I'll be taking a break. I'll have to check the calendar after I'm done editing because I forget exactly what date right now but it might be around the weekend or something but i don't know i'll have to see as for the current game streams i'm going through at the moment i feel that they're kind of mixed i said i was going to go through time splitters but because of the shit that's been happening in april i really haven't had any time to go through that so at this moment in time i am just trying to catch up on any games i have a backlog on in particular I have been playing LEGO Star Wars 2 and LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga since 
I know there is the Skywalker Saga, which I really want to play, but unfortunately, I don't really know if I'll be able to stream it without it being extremely boring. Part of the reason why streaming any of the LEGO games, despite them being pretty good, at least before the voice acting became the standard now, is that a lot of those games have copyrighted material, in that they all use the music from their film scores, particularly with the Star Wars films having the score from John Williams, or Indiana Jones in particular having the music from there, and of course Harry Potter, which I actually recently completed. Finally. I've had that game for so fucking long, and there was a really nasty glitch that prevented me from completing it. It is definitely the meatiest of the classic Lego games, at least made by Traveler's Tales, although at that point, when that game came out, they go by TT Games now. Ha ha ha, TT Games. Ha ha ha. But it is actually a pretty good game, and I have a media thread on Twitter if you want to catch up on some games I've been playing as of late. And I'll probably post on there more, hopefully, when I'm done playing some other stuff. There are other games I do want to try streaming. I've been actually... I actually just played a little bit of Far Cry Primal. I've been playing that a little bit off stream. I've only played it once prior, but apparently the game didn't auto-save the checkpoint, so I played it a little bit more. I actually played it after I was done streaming, I figured, since I was also playing Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal, I did get to the point to where I just got off Velden, but I'm going to be honest, because I don't want any fucking headaches from playing Going Commando, I have decided to do a little bit of farming on Velden, which I basically started a new game and just grind out the health, or nanotech, as well as upgrading the two starting weapons that you get. I know some people might be kind of pissed off at that, but number one, I didn't play the sequels back in the day. Number two, it's my streams and I play how the fuck I want. Number three, <laughs> I really wanted to play these games, and I'm going to be honest, the grinding and going commando kind of pissed me off, so if I get it over with now, it probably won't bite me in the ass. Four, I how doubt anyone really gives a shit about my streams anyway, so whatever. Maybe in the distant future, I'll probably do a mega cut of the shit that happened on my streams, provided my channel doesn't get shut down before then. And five, it's a single player game, and I do what I want as long as I'm not cheating. Unlike a certain individual who hates shortcuts, but will take it himself. I'm also going to continue with Sly 3. I should mention that I did actually do this mission where... I believe it was in the second episode. I forget exactly what mission it is, but it's the one where you have to lure the enemies to this crocodile. And essentially with Murray, the enemies always respawn indefinitely. So I have this arcade stick. It's the X-Kai, I think. It's this one. I forget what it's called specifically, but I've had this arcade stick for a couple of years now. Though I only mainly use it in the rare instance I play fighting games, particularly when I play Skullgirls with those story modes of those characters, because that's really the only reason I really whip it out now. Not a sex joke. And I have I was actually going to record and upload a story mode playthrough, which I did with Parasol. Not Sorry, not Parasol. Umbrella. Whatever her fucking name is, I tweeted about it on my media thread. But the fucking, uh, the DB with the Elgato was fucked up. So the game volume was way too loud, so the footage was practically a waste. And the only thing that was worth salvaging is fucking feet. Yeah. Fucking feet. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, there was a really shit ton of edgy jokes I don't think would be safe for YouTube. So, maybe it was for the best. I probably would have done like what Cyblade does with his playthroughs now, where he just takes the footage and just cuts it and give a slash to the uninteresting parts. Which, actually, I might do that if my if I bring back my play plays. But, even with the play plays, I'm not necessarily tiring it, but once again, with the bullshit that's been going on in the real world, I just haven't really had any interest in recording anything as far as guides or even plot plays is concerned. I've just been mainly worrying about not losing my fucking mind. I even recorded like a two and a half hour rant of me screaming into the void because I'm really pissed off at a lot of things, 
but I really wanted to get it out on the 27th, and specifically on the 27th, because a certain individual got really mad at me for saying happy birthday to them because they wanted to keep their birthday private. I'm not going to really go into any further elaboration because it would just make the hole in my heart completely dark and barren. Other games I really did want to try playing, of course, was the Demon Souls Remaster. I am almost done playing that shit because I have gotten to Upper Latchia, though I'm trying my hardest to find a way to farm the, I think it's the Moonstone Chunks from those Dreglings, I think, though I don't quite know how that will work. I am probably should just focus on getting the Secret Dagger up to plus 10, or maybe plus 8, depending on how easy farming the standard uh, standard sharp materials are, because I know that by watching Press Continue, he did mention that the Moon Falcon was, or Falchion, whatever, I don't care, is a really good weapon for SL1, and I'm only doing SL1 since I have thought of making a mule build to help others, but because the game is kind of hard to get because it's only on PS5, and until it comes out on PC, I really don't give a shit. I'm happy with my PS5, and I don't care. I know people say it's not worth the money, but I don't give a shit. It's something I wanted, and I've finally gotten it from not a scalper, so there you go. Maybe if Saturn and Dreamcast emulation is decent on the Xbox Series X, I might get it then, but until then, I will stick with my Beast Mode machine. I also recently finished the Quake remaster that was on the PlayStation 5, since for some reason the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 trophies are completely separate, and since I have also completed the Xbox One version a little while ago as far as base game achievements are concerned, I will finally start playing the expansions, though I'm not certain if I want to do a plot plays of the expansions that are on the PC version, because they were they were initially PC exclusive until obviously this Quake remaster, and because there are some really neat trophies for the Quake remaster that also involve, was it the Scourge of Armagon and some other one? I probably butchered her name, I really don't give a shit. I really wanted to play those, but I'm going to actually tell a little bit of a story. Before this beast mode machine right here, I actually had another uh, laptop. It was a Windows 7 laptop with a disk drive, and back when I actually used to buy things at a retro store, one of the games I had bought was the original Quake, alongside Quake 2 and Quake 3 Arena. I did eventually get Quake 3 Team Arena on Amazon because I wanted the complete Quake set. I don't have Quake 4 on PC, unfortunately, but I do at least have the Xbox 360 version, and for those wondering, yes, it did come with the Quake 2 bonus disc, which is pretty interesting that one of the GOAT shooters is ported on 360, but only through that bonus disc, and yet there were apparently horror stories of people trading in Quake 4, but keeping the bonus disc, which has the better game, which is pretty fucking creepy in my opinion but let's just move on. I have actually played Quake on this Windows 7 machine, and I remember actually listening to Daria, you know, the, the TV show that was on MTV, which definitely aged like absolute pristine fine wine in my opinion, and it is still a pretty decent show. And I remember listening to Daria while playing Quake, and it felt really nostalgic. But the thing that also really kind of made me mad is that I have unsurfaced this Power 250 CD. And I actually tweeted about this a while ago. But basically there are, I believe, a total of 255 games on this disc. And here it is in case you want clarification. And seriously, it is not worth the fucking money that's like one person is selling on eBay. But this CD essentially has a bunch of shareware discs. But unfortunately... I did not have a XP machine at the time, it was a Windows Vista. And I'm only bringing this up specifically for two reasons. One, this shareware disk actually had Rise of the Triad, 
Duke Nukem 3D and Quake. Had I been able to play those games back in the day, back when life wasn't completely shitty, around the mid 2000s to be specific, I probably would have actually really, really liked Quake even more than Doom, because I think Quake is a technological improvement over the original Doom, which is my all-time favorite first-person shooter, with the only other one that comes remotely close is, of course, the Time Splitters trilogy, and I don't say that lightly. There might be a lot of other decent shooters that I might find interesting or fun, but objectively, Time Splitters has so much more content than, like, 95% of all shooters that I played. Yes, I do enjoy Halo. Yes, I do enjoy Far Cry before it got milked to death. And yes, I can even enjoy the other games that other people might not like. Even something like Alien Skull and Marines, besides the horrendous AI, at least has some good ideas. Maybe I'll elaborate in another video people really give a shit about my opinion on that game. But Time Splitters is definitely the game that has a lot of content and other stuff that actually makes the game more enjoyable. Now, on with other projects that aren't related to streaming. I do have other videos I have wanted to put out there, but because of people like you know who and you know what, <clears throat> I haven't really been in the mood to record a response video or anything of the sort. So what I probably might do is Whip out some old footage if I can find it or re-record footage of me going through, say, Mafia 2 or Super Mario 64, where I have whipped up a 10 Things series documentation on DeviantArt, or maybe dictate a project I had uploaded prior where I talked about overrated video game tunes just to kind of fill in the void, even though that might be kind of boring, but it should spark some discussion, despite it being documented on DeviantArt for quite some time. But, as far as actual recorded projects are concerned, I could probably finish up a rant or two, but I'm not going to promise anything, because I noticed some topics might be too sensitive for YouTube, so I might have to use a Google Drive to get that out there, but considering Google doesn't really give a shit anyway, I really don't know. I mean, it's not like I'm uploading- Now that I got most of the stuff out there, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little mini rant, or quickie rant, shorty rant, whatever you want to call it. I already said at the beginning of the video, I really don't like Call of Duty. And let me get my general feelings about Call of Duty out of the way right now. First of all, I always found it to be extremely overrated. Not just when the series came out back in the day, when it was exclusive to PC, then the third game came out that was console exclusive, worst fucking game ever. But then, when the fourth game came out, Call of Duty 4, the whole world changed. This was back when the Xbox 360 was pretty much a new thing, alongside the PS3. And of course the PC version probably being way better. And also being one of the few COD games that isn't tied to Steam, alongside World of War. But, I'm going to be honest, like a lot of people, I actually started around Modern Warfare 2. I believe that's when I've actually had access to the game. I can't really check due to personal reasons I'm not going to get into. But I know it was around Modern Warfare 2 is where I really started to play the game. Back during the school days, of course, and whenever I got to play COD 4. But... I personally feel that around Modern Warfare 3 is where I was really tired of the series at that point. I mean, 2007 to 2011 is quite a big jump. That was when I felt the series like get really stagnating. And apparently, Black Ops 2 was the best multiplayer game of all time. But here's the thing. I don't like playing COD online. And I'm going to be very honest. I do not like playing these kinds of games online with other people. First of all, people play these, like, sweats. Not many COD games even have bot support to begin with, which the only ones that really have any decent kinds of bot support is, funny enough, Black Ops. And depending on whether you're playing the online or offline version of Call of Duty Black Ops, you're going to get a completely different experience. When I think they even had to patch in a bot option for offline play, which was fucking bizarre, but whatever. Much like what I said with Halo, or... You can't release a game for full price when two-thirds of the options are locked out. If an entire game mode is locked behind multiplayer, and you can only access one-third of the fucking game, then I'm sorry, that's fucking stupid. Yes, Halo does have a decent single-player mode, but if you're not playing co-op, that's really your only other option. 
You can't play against bots in multiplayer, which is fucking annoying because Perfect Dark and even Times was that just fine. So I never really saw the appeal of playing Halo unless I wanted to play something different. Whereas something like Time Splitters, I could play any mode I want. Even the other modes are essentially copying off of Quake 3 and its other gameplay modes like Challenge Mode where they completely take the game engine to a whole new level by having you do things that were unique to the games at the time. I mean, did you know that even Time Splitters basically invented fucking Kill Confirmed and fucking Survival? I mean, Zombies? Yeah, Time Splitters actually had a Zombies mode before Zombies became a thing. You know, like what Horde mode is now? And not directly related, but even games like Gears of War, where literally half the game is either single player or playing against another person in multiplayer. Which is something not even the remastered fix, which is very fucking disappointing. There's something about the multiplayer that really pisses me off. Part of it is probably because of people who think that quick scoping and using aim assist is like the single fucking greatest thing that they've ever seen, and it quite frankly annoys me that I know people who strictly play like this, and that mentality is just fucking annoying. Even besides the whole quick scoping fiasco, I just don't care for a game where you can only get enjoyment out of a game if your only option is to play with the people. For COD, the multiplayer might be fun, but if your only option is to play against random people or with friends in split screen, then I'm sorry, it's kind of a shitty move in my opinion. I know World at War introduced the zombies mode, but I'm going to be honest, I really don't like the zombies mode either. It is a score attack mode, and there really isn't much reason to actually play it beyond just surviving a certain amount of waves. I never really got it. I do have to say the survival mode in Modern Warfare 3, though, is actually pretty good. So I'm going to talk about that for a little bit. That's what you've been mainly watching for the past several minutes. So the reason I do like survival mode is that it does take the maps of multiplayer, but essentially having you fight off against waves of enemies. No, duh. But unlike in the campaign, at least to my knowledge, you actually do fight off at least in modern shooter aspects, somewhat variety of different enemies using different weapons, having dogs who have, you know, explosive satchels and shit that can blow up when you kill them and stuff, essentially their own version of martyrdom, and even enemies who actually have, you know, different suits of armor, making them very hard to take down, and even, of course, the sons, the sons of bitches juggernauts who take a ass load of bullets to kill and actually require you to use the fucking stun grenades, or flash, sorry. Despite COD having pretty measly enemy types where all you're really fighting is either dudes with guns or other dudes of guns, I do have to say that the survival mode in Modern Warfare 3 at least tries to spice up the enemy types. You have enemies who actually use claymores, you have, you know, again, the attack dogs that actually have at least one other variant that you don't really see in other modes to my knowledge, and even the chemical warfare dudes who actually slow you down. And even with the multiplayer levels being the basis of the survival mode, you can actually kind of see how just fucking crazy it was getting because despite me playing this with my friend I mentioned earlier, I actually kind of had a knack for playing it. But there is one major problem that does prevent me from, or at least prevented me, from playing this mode super seriously, and that is this mode has a offline level up system where you have to reach level 50 in order to unlock everything, and until you get to level 25, you are restricted to only the first tier of levels, since there's at least four different tiers, and each of those four tiers are based around difficulty, and for whatever reason, you cannot change the difficulty of those levels, and also for a reason, they're not even labeled recruit, regular, hardened, and veteran. They're just easy, normal, hard, and insane, which I think is quite asinine, but whatever. It really would have been awesome if you could actually change the difficulty of those levels, but having the difficulty modifiers, or even having a custom difficulty, where you can, you know, obviously once you max out the experience bar, which is actually what I did, and I'll explain how I did it in a second, you could actually have a lot of fun with this mode. I think they didn't let you do that for balancing reasons, or because, you know, the game has a leaderboard system, which, obviously the most simplest way of not Affecting the leaderboards, just if you use the custom loadout mode, you don't get to upload the scores to the leaderboards, and you don't even get to place in the personal best scores. But maybe there's a modded PC that fixes that. I do have the game on Steam, and sometimes the games actually do go on sale 
and I have most of the COD games that I prefer playing personally. I don't really care for anything after Black Ops 2, so no ghosts. And I should also mention, I one of my friends actually said that Extinction was really the only good mode in Ghosts, and I can kind of see that, but you really have to adapt to the way the game wants you to play it. And I will admit that 2-minute score attack mode is kind of interesting, but it is still something I need to get used to. So maybe I'll talk about that in another video. The way to level up, at least in my experience, is by at least reaching level 25 and then having a second controller or someone... Yeah, I think it just be over second controller. If you're playing on PC, though, you might be kind of fucked. But <laughs> you basically boot up the mission, fire mission, which is, I think, the same mission from Call of Duty 4, I think, where one person is on the AC, 130, and the other person is on the ground, and basically you just want to shoot the two jeeps and then the helicopter, and you do this for a couple minutes, and you level up. I had to fucking grind my ass off to get to level 50, so I could keep up with one of my friends, who was a much higher level. And because these saves are tied to the system rather than the online servers, I was actually level 1 when he and my other friend, who I used to do videos with back in the day, known as Ricky, big ups Ricky, I actually had to start at level 1 because I still had my old save on the Xbox 360. Thank goodness the Modern Warfare 3 servers and other game servers have the multiplayer progress tied to, well, the servers. I had to start at level 1. But when I copied my save from the 360 back into the Xbox One, I was a much higher level. And then once I got to level 25, I then had to plug in a second controller and basically do this for, I think, a, a week. I think like five levels in a week. And it was really grueling because I don't want to be a noob or as the RuneScape callers used to call it, a tube. I'll just put the definition on the screen in case you know what it is, because it is a pretty obscure word. And yes, I do know of the word. I had the strategy guide back in the day. Don't be a fucking influencer and try to convince me otherwise, you piece of shit. I really wanted to make sure that I was able to be kept up with this friend who knows a lot more about COD than I do. But I still don't really care for the game. But in the rare instance that I do feel like playing Modern Warfare 3, and for this video specifically, because it is not only an update video, but more or less of a little ramble, I actually kind of enjoyed playing this mode in the times that I did, especially when playing solo, since I could actually go crazy, coming up with some crazy strategies. With the only times I actually had to restart was the one insane map that I actually showed off, because that shit was fucking grueling, but whatever. But besides having to level up to level 50 just to fully enjoy the mode, I do quite like the strategic moments that this mode is to offer, and I quite like it more than zombies in my opinion. Because for one, you can actually use the points to use what you want, rather than having to be restricted to part of a level that have to find a stupid fucking easter egg. It's just shit, it's just fucking stupid to me. I don't care for that crap at all. Though to be fair, I think there was more or less implemented in Black Ops 2, so whatever. I really don't like how this mode only lets you play up to two people, though, which is something that Zombies at least had no problem with since, at least on console and on split screen, you got the two. When you're playing online, though, you got the four. For some reason, because it's still based off Spec Ops from Modern Warfare 2, which was okay, I guess, but not as interesting, I guess. Not, nowhere near as good as Time Splitters 2's challenge mode, but it is still a cool idea, though. More games definitely need to do this, in my opinion, but... I do feel that the survival mode in Modern Warfare 3 is pretty good, and despite playing a controller, by the way, yes, this was on a Xbox 360, though being played on Xbox One for convenience sake, because since my friend has the game on Xbox One, and since I have the game digitally, why not play it? And surprisingly not too laggy, by the way. There is some lag spikes here and there, but whatever. And just in case anyone wonders, I do actually kind of like playing Modern Warfare 3, at least in private matches, because you can actually customize the classes to your liking, since you can't do that in Modern Warfare 2, and you can't do that in Black Ops. And I highly doubt you can't do that in Call of Duty 4 as well. Modern Warfare 3 is definitely the most accessible, but if it had bots, I think it'd definitely be my favorite. But whatever. Let's just get back to the topic of Spec Ops. I don't quite like the self-revive mechanic, only because if you get revived by a partner, it still uses up the self-revive, which I kind of think 
I, I kind of think defeats the purpose of the self-revive. If you kill an enemy with the self-revive, it should be used up, not when you actually get revived by the partner, which is the whole point of self-revive, but that just might be for balancing reasons, but whatever. I also don't quite like the shopping menu in that you can actually buy a weapon that you didn't want to buy and it will replace it without warning. Literally all sales are final. But there is another menu where it will ask you, it will overwrite, but yet that doesn't happen with the guns, which I think is very annoying and it's something you have to learn. It can be learned, but it is just very annoying and very off-putting. But again, that is just me. Coming from someone who doesn't really play COD, but I still feel should be worth mentioning because someone could actually buy a gun that they didn't want to buy, and they'd just be kind of fucked. This also might be because it's Spec Ops, but I really don't like how there isn't really a variety to any of the attachments you can give. You can only really use, like, what, three of the sites, and I've been told that the ACOG is the worst in the game. Not that they give a shit, but just to avoid shit in the comments, I only chose to go with the grip, since that is the only good attachment, and I chose not to use the noob tube, because I don't want people complaining about this shit in 2022, and I didn't use the shotgun attachment since I didn't feel like ruining the streak of getting to wave 15, since there is an achievement for getting to wave 15, which I only picked the maps I did not have the best score, which was you know, not at wave 15. At least going by what the in-game menu said, and just to make sure I did that, I chose those levels specifically. And plus to show off to my friend that yes, I got to this wave on this map by myself. And you'll be seeing that in the footage. So don't tell me I'm not very good at the game, or that I am a noob, because I am certainly not a noob. I might be a tube, but not a noob. But I at least gave it my all, so there you go. Is there anything else I want to mention before I close? I don't think there really is anything else I want to mention besides that Spec Ops can be fun, but it is still COD, so I don't quite like it. I just want to go really quick and mention about that actually. That is actually one other thing I do want to bring up. Halo Infinite having bots is impressive because no other game prior has it. But the game is so fucking terrible in multiplayer that even when I tried playing that shit once, it was really annoying. I might elaborate that in a further video. But the only other thing I'm going to say about Halo Infinite... Why the fuck did you need to patch a Scorpion gun glitch 343? This is why nobody likes you. Except you're Bizarro, so people do for some reason, because it's Halo. Whatever, I'm not, I'm not going to fucking start saying more in the comments. That's all I really have to say in this little update video. I hope you enjoy my absolutely terrible Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Survival Mode Spec Ops gameplay. I hope to bring a lot more good stuff in the coming months. And I hope you actually learned a little something about me today. And I hope to see you on Shames. Thank you for watching. I will see you all next file. Take care.